incognito. I'm wearing these shades and this hat because I'm, I'm in hiding. At least that's what I wanted to do. All week long, all I wanted to do is hide from God. Have you ever felt like you wanted to just hide from God? Well, that's what I wanted to do all week. I mean, I know it's the stupidest thing ever because you can't hide from yourself and you can't hide from God. And that's the truth that I know. I mean, obviously, it's like the stupidest idea ever to think you can hide from God. But that's all I wanted to do all week because God put me in a place where I felt like he's trying to test me. And Satan, well, the enemy, he's been digging the screws in, just, just digging it in at every opportunity. You see, there's a guy at my job, actually, it's a female at my job who has been torturing me. She has been driving me completely crazy, crazy, and working my last nerve. That girl has done everything to jeopardize my job, gossip about me, lie on me, everything she could possibly do to work my nerves. And as a mature Christian, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to pray through it and be the bigger person. But have I done that? Nope. I have failed this test at every opportunity. I have not been a mature Christian. I have gossiped about her. I've sworn and cursed and said every curse word you can possibly think of. Not to her, mind you, but behind her back, to other people, to my co-workers. I have, van I have scandalized her name in every way possible. And then I will go home. And I repent about it, of course. I pray, I get on my knees, and I ask for repentance, and I ask for help and strength to be the bigger Christian and the better person. But tomorrow, I'm weak and do the same thing all over again. This has happened every single day this week. No matter how much praying I did, no matter how much Bible I read, every single day this week, I have failed the test. And by the end of the week, I was so embarrassed and ashamed that I wanted to do exactly what I'm doing right now, hide from God. I wanted to put on my glasses and my big hat and just go and shrink off in the corner somewhere. And I suspect that maybe Adam and Eve, they felt the same way, you know, when they put on the, the fig leaves and they were hiding in the garden after the fruit was eaten by Eve and then she enticed Adam to eat the fruit and disobey God. They were hiding from him and I never could understand that. Why would you hide from your help? And that's exactly what I felt like doing, hiding from my help this week. I mean, God is my only help. He's my strength. He's my redeemer. He's my, he's my savior. But I felt like hiding from him because I was so embarrassed and so ashamed. And I feel like that's what we all do. At some point, we feel like we're just failing over and over and over again. And we just want to hide from God. But that is exactly what we shouldn't do. And yes, I know it's stupid. I know you can't hide from God. I mean, the two things you can never hide from are yourself and God. Like it or not, no matter where you go, they're going with you. So I know it's stupid. I know you can't hide from God. Eventually, I came to my senses and I realized, why would I even want to? God is my only help. He's my only strength. He's my only refuge from myself and from the world. But this last week, I've really felt like I've been put to the test and I've been under attack and I have been failing the test miserably. You see, there's this girl at my job, coworker. We know a lot about those, don't we? They can really, really test us. I mean, you live more with them than you do your own family. You see them 40 hours a week or more. And she has really been working my last nerve. This girl has been getting into my business, trying to get me fired, gossiping about me, lying about me, talking behind my back. And how have I reacted like the mature Christian that I am? I've done basically the same thing. I have lost my temper. I've gossiped about her behind her back. I have cursed her out in so many ways in my mind and verbally. I've pretty much trashed her. I've vented and I've complained about her to everybody, including God. 
I mean, I have come home and gotten down on my knees and prayed about it and asked God to forgive me and give me strength to be the better Christian, to love this girl, to, to be nice to her and to do the opposite of what she's doing to me. But every single time I feel all prayed up and strong, I would get back to work and she would do something, something with the help of the enemy to just twist the knife and do something that would just make me lose it. Okay. And eventually I go right back to my old self. Oh, Sherry just showed up. I go right across to my neighbor and gossip about her and call her all kind of ratchet names. And immediately I would feel so bad about it. Every night and every morning, I would come home feeling so guilty and ashamed. By the end of the week, I just wanted to be incognito. I just wanted to hide from God because I felt like I kept failing. I was failing this test. And here I am sitting on this, in front of this camera talking to you guys about it. And I knew I was going to have to do that. You think I want to tell the whole world that I'm a failure and I can't get beyond something as petty as gossiping and losing my temper about a coworker? But that's how I felt. I was so embarrassed and ashamed. I just wanted to hide from God. And that is exactly where the enemy wants us to be. He wants us to feel that way. He wants us to be so consumed with guilt and shame that we're distracted from, from our relationship with God and from our calling and our purpose. But the good news and the good thing that I had to remember and I'm here to tell you is that God had a plan for that just like Adam and Eve, you know, I've, I can relate to them because after they had eaten the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat, they felt guilt and shame and remorse. And all they wanted to do is hide from God. I mean, let's face it, Satan, the enemy, he had set them up. He wanted them to feel the guilt and the shame that separates us, that makes us feel the separation from God. But God knew it. He knew it. He was like, what's up? What, you, what are you guys hiding for? You know, you don't hide from me. I'm your help. I'm your refuge. I'm your comfort. I'm your strength. I am the one that can pull you up from your bootstraps and heal you and make you feel alive again. And you know what? I realized that. That is exactly what the enemy wants us to feel. He wanted me to feel like a failure, like I needed to be hiding from God when I needed to be turning to God. God said to us, when you are weak, that's when I'm strong. He wanted me to know, listen, I've already have, I have already have a plan for that. It's called Jesus. The good news is for you and for me is that we don't have to worry about that because Jesus already paid the price. He already died and suffered for us so that we don't have to hide behind fig leaves or drugs or alcohol or people pleasing or even a hat and shades. We can wash ourselves clean every day and step out and to be the person that God called us to be. So all you have to do is ask for forgiveness, wash in the blood, and keep it moving. Paul said it best in Philippians 3, 13. He said, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what's ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize for which God through Jesus is calling us. What is God calling you to do? Are you letting the lies from the enemy distract you and tell you that you're not worth God's time, that you can't have a relationship with God, that you're not good enough, that you can never achieve what God has put you here to achieve and to fulfill your lifelong purpose and your destiny? Well, he's a liar, and that's what he has set you up to do. He wants us to feel ashamed and guilty. That's the purpose of temptation, is so that we feel a separation from God. So don't believe the enemy's lies. I know for me, I'm called to do this. I don't always feel like it, but I know that God called me to do this. He called me to sit in front of this camera and to tell my truth, no matter how bad it feels to do that sometimes. But that's what I'm called to do. What are you called to do? What is God calling you to do that you feel too ashamed or embarrassed to do because of your past or the mistakes that you've made? Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to live like that anymore. God, through Jesus Christ, has already taken care of that. He's already paid that bill. Your karma bill 
and your slate is clean. And all you have to do is reach out and ask for God's help. Repent and use the blood of Jesus to wash you clean so you don't have to hide anymore. Have a good, blessed, awesome day. Go out and be your best selves and do what God has put you here to do.